Okay, another cuckoo clock to repair. This one is uh, a very big one. You can see by the size of my hand compared to the cuckoo clock. Very large. It's an eight day. It uh, obviously has a lot of animations on it. It's got little the dancers, typical dancers that come out. That's a little fella here that obviously rings the bell. And we got a, a band here that does some kind of dancing. We got a water wheel over here. Now I don't know exactly what's wrong with this, but we're going to take a close look at it and uh, see what needs to be done with it. So, first thing I'll do is I'll hang it up on a test stand and put the weights on it, see if it runs, see what needs to be done. Okay, looking on the inside, the movement is a typical regular 34 and uh, a lot of staining on the movement, regular 34 and uh, And it says made in Germany, which means uh, it's not that old clock. Bellows are in good shape. The uh, wire that lists the cuckoo is on the back uh, and also attached to that same bellow, the wire that goes down here that moves and that's hooked up to the little bell ringer and you got dancers up here and you got that little band on the front that are all operated off of this music box here's the linkage from the movement that trips the music box and I have a feeling that some things are bent out of shape there somebody's put a little solder onto that thing so uh, let's see if I can point that out see somebody soldered something right there so it's been worked on or made this is kind of bent uh, I would suspect that the music box isn't going to work right until there's some adjustments made but I'll we'll hook it up and just how it works for if it uh, runs or whatever we got the weights on, they're 1260 grams a piece. And as to get her started, I put a drop of oil on just the pivots on this side of the movement. And uh, it is running. So at least we know it's going to run. We'll see if the other functions work. All right, we're going to move the hour hand ahead, and I think that should put us at the half hour. Let's just see if it works. Okay, Google works. I'll come up to the hour. Dancers work. Music box works. And the water wheel is moving. Very good. Looks like it's all going to work. Let's check out the bell ringer. That's that thing down there. Yeah, that'll work fine. Come up on the hour. is moving that moves the little guys out front. Everything seems to be operating properly. So I'm we'll hit to the half hour. And now we'll go to the hour. Okay the little guys music guys are running. Dancers are going. 
water wheel is running. Okay, looks good. All right, this cuckoo clock only plays music. A cuckoo is on the half hour, but it doesn't play music on the half hour. It only plays music on the hour. Now, is it supposed to do that? Well, I don't think so, because the time and cuckoo weights drop a whole bunch further than the music box weight. So I think the music box is only playing half the time it's supposed to. So we got to take a look at why it's not not playing in the half hour. First thing we got to do is take the hands off. Take off the hand, and that's a nut and a washer. And then we got to take off the next. Oh, that's always a problem, isn't it? That one's tight. Okay, that takes off. Now we take the hand, our hand off. The rest of this stuff, we'll shut the. A little clasp on the door shut, and we'll turn this over, Then we can start to remove things. <coughs> and I'm going to pick this. We need to take a look real quick, document how these uh, chains go in here. There's two chains that are associated with the music box. One is pretty straightforward and simple. That's simply a double, a double chain that goes over the... the uh, chain gear that has the weight on it. The other one is a chain that is run by the music box and it's a looped chain. It runs around a little rubber wheel down here and that little rubber wheel is what goes through the case and runs the uh, that runs the water wheel. The other chains are straightforward. We're going to take the loops and the hooks off of the chains so that we can extract those from the case and get the movement out. And the way we do that is, uh, you know, this has, uh, good, these have, this is the way they should be done. There should be a hook. A, some chain and then another loop and that keeps the uh, that keeps the chain hooks from getting too uptight against the case and making it difficult to get the weights off so we'll open up this loop up here above that god I can't see it there it is okay okay open up that loop well, I still didn't get it open. That's a real booger. Another pair of pliers here. So I can hold on to that loop and open it up. Too hard to hold with just fingers. Oh, you little devil. really hard to open. Okay, anyway. There, the hook is taken off. 
Okay. We can go back over to this one now, do the same thing here. Get three weights we gotta take off. off we can pull the chains out uh, but I'm going to tip the clock up a little bit so that they don't get uh, fall off the chain wheels I'll pull this one okay that's the one off the music box now gather it up Put it in here. And then we're going to take off. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, there's some rust on that chain. These are, uh, let's pull the next one out. Let's loop it over and pull the next one out. Okay, we got the chains out. Strange arrangement. Usually the bellows are on either side of the clock. These are both on the same side, so the uh, higher pitched one is in the front, lower pitched one is in the back. So before I take them out, I'm just going to put a little uh, tiny F on that one to show that it's the front bell. And they're held in with a screw on the side and a uh, and a nail. Or here the sound comes out. There's a screw here and there's a nail here. And you can tell that this is a relatively new clock because they've got Phillips, Phillips screws on them. Phillips head. are stripped in that one and this one the screw came right out this one the screw is not going to come out yeah, it's all stripped so we'll fill the hole in that bellows to get it out and then what I do is I take a flat screwdriver and I get in between the case and the bellows just about further. The uh, brad is it's holding that in. And pry the bellows off. Alright, now let me show you how this comes out. Once that uh, once that bellows is loose, you see the wire from there down to the bellow lift wire and we just uh, just a loop we just push it down and freeze it up and you take the whole bellows right out so that one is out Put that one away now we're going to do the same thing with the next one and this one came right off now do that now we've got a little complication here with the uh, I have put the camera down, but we have a wire that's here. This wire here, up here, goes and lifts the bird's tail. The wire that's on the side and goes down, down there, is the wire that runs the bell ringer. So you got to put the camera down to loosen that wire. Wire up at the bellows itself. Let's open the loop. I got the bellow out. Uh, I want to take that. I want to take that wire completely out. It'll make it a lot easier to deal with. Pretty slim wire. Pretty flexible. the wire for the bell ringer. Okay. Okay. Then I'll do 
two more things I've got to undo this wire right here that trips the music box and I've got to undo the bird and I will unscrew the screw that's holding the bird on the perch as well as remove the wire from the door and then I can take the bird off and I'll do those two things. Okay, got that wire disconnected and the bird loosened and uh, all I have left now is to take the four screws out of it holding the movement and I can lift the movement out as I slip the bird off the perch because this rod and the whole mechanism with the music box is not connected to the movement so I can take that that uh, movement right out which I'll do next okay Lift this movement out I'll reach in and slide the bird off the perch and that movement comes right up okay we'll deal with the uh, music box and the rest of that later. I'm going to set this aside right now so we can look at the look at the movement. Okay, let's set. And we'll just take a little bit of look at the movement and see what we got here. I'll take those glasses off. We'll put these glasses on. Clean them up a little bit so I can see. Man, they're really nasty. I need to get some cleaner for these. Alright, anyway. Let's take a look. I'm going to use a magnifier and my magnifying glasses. See what's going on here. look okay. It just looks kind of dirty, that's all. This is, of course, a regular. All right, somebody has worked on this. They scratched something onto the, onto the plate. Uh, Looks like this was uh, cleaned prior with what I call a dunk and swish. In other words, they dunked it into a cleaner without uh, and didn't dismantle it. Um, let's take a look here because there's lots of loose uh, pieces. Let me move this in here. And see, I don't know if I can show you. I'll get a forceps on here. I can just show you here, maybe. It's the, uh, whatever the cleaner is that they put it in. There was uh, lacquer on these plates. Let's see. There's a there's a piece of lacquer laying loose in there. And that could potentially have been causing some problems with this because uh, pieces of loose lacquer like that can get into the mechanism and mess things up. There's another piece of loose lacquer. Um, I noticed some on the back too. On the other side over here. And among the... Uh, Levers. There's some more lacquer that's loose. Big chunk here. I don't know if you that shows up or not. You see, that's a piece of lacquer. Another piece here. So somebody just took this and dunked it into a 
an ammoniated cleaner uh, without taking it apart and properly cleaning. And uh, the ammoniated cleaner loosened the lacquer, but then didn't bother to clean it like it should be cleaned. So it's a another job for the shoemaker. Another piece of lacquer. I don't know if I'll re-lacquer these or not. Uh, if I were, I'm going to definitely clean them. There's probably lacquer floating around inside this movement. It's very oily. Wasn't uh, very properly oiled. Uh, other than that, it's a it's a typical a typical uh, regular movement. Um, somebody wants to know if you look at a regular 24. You know, I have the chain wheel, a second wheel, and, and the escape wheel. This has one, two, three, four wheels. And uh, same on the other side here. We have uh, one extra wheel. It makes it run eight days instead of uh, just 30 hours. Well, this is an interesting piece here. Looking with the, I think somebody had a parakeet or a canary. No, I guess that isn't. Is that what that is? Looked like a feather. I don't know if that's what that is. A feather, a piece of dust or something. And anyway, it was in the movement. Actually, it does it's not? Doesn't look especially dirty. But I want to take it apart anyway and do a proper job on this one. Um, yeah, there's some more lacquer down here in the click. In the click. Another piece of lacquer here. Just a lot of loose pieces of lacquer from just doing a dunk and swish on this. Hello. Okay, so we'll, we're going to take it apart, and uh, as usual, what we'll do is start by removing the suspension rod. Oh, man, I need that. One of my thinner. Get in here and just open that up a little bit. It allows that to come unhooked. And we take it out like that. All right. We know it runs. It's been running well. One thing I'd like to point out is that uh, whoever worked on this, uh, the lever that the lever that trips the uh, music box has been soldered on here. Now, I don't know why they soldered that in. Uh, I don't like to see solder on a movement. Let's we'll see what we can do with it. You should be able to... Uh, yeah, we'll see when we get that out, what we got to do. But, uh, hammer. Let me take that stuff off, I guess. Let me get a couple of containers here. T in the bottom of this one for time. And then for strike. And we'll start by taking out the, uh, as we normally do, just uh, disconnect the spring from the hammer. Then that's rotated around. You can see there's a slot right here. And uh, 
to get that out. There's a little pin on the inside part of the arbor. One way, let me see, how do I do that to show, make it show up? Ah, here. It rotates, say, rotate that hammer around till that little pin. Yeah, it still doesn't show it because I get my hand in the way. Rotate the hammer around until those the pin lines up with that slot and then it just slides out like that and that goes in the strike and the same with the uh, with the two levers for the lift levers for the cuckoos you rotate it around until a little pin lines up with the slot and you pull it right out this one same thing slide them right out and you'll notice that uh, all the time when you take a cuckoo apart, that one lift lever is longer than the other one. The longer one goes on the bottom. Okay, here's the mechanism for holding the door open. This gets lifted up, that drops over. That's what keeps the cuckoo bird out during the strike. So now to take these off, what we gotta do is re we remove uh, Eclipse. There's an Eclipse here, and there's an Eclipse here over a washer. We gotta take those two off uh, to get uh, to get everything off of the front, to get the snail off, to get the rack off, to get the intermediate wheel off. So I'm going to get in here, I'm going to push on that E-clip, maybe I'm going to push on that E-clip, I don't know if I got it loose or not, yeah it did, a little devil popped, a lot, a lot of times I'll do that, that's also magnetic, there's the size of that E-clip, but pretty doggone tiny drop that in there and I'll get the one off of the washer underneath here well I have a hard time seeing today get it started loosened up with the pliers and take forceps That's a booger. It doesn't want to cooperate. Okay, there we go. Now I got it further out. Ah, come on. Hmm. Little stinker. comes off under here that keeps everything in place all right then we can take the you know, this snail and the rack almost have to come off at the same time one kind of interferes with the other and we end up taking that off there's the rack here's the snail and we take off the intermediate wheel we should look at it, make sure it's not cracked. Looks good. Okay. Now you gotta take the two levers off here. Uh, there's a spring right here. That comes off. And we can remove that. Well, maybe we'll remove it. That's caught on the top. spring comes off 
Now to get these levers off, uh, they're through the plate and they have eclipse. They're holding them on. Well, in this case, it's not an eclip holding that one on, it's the uh, lever for the uh, for the music box. It's interesting that that doesn't come. What is keeping that from sliding? Huh. Oh, I see. They moved the E clip. The E clip for that one is actually on the inside of the plate. And so we have to remove that this way. Goodness, a cuckoo bird door is in the way. Come on, little clip. There we go. And take our forceps. Reach in there and pull it out. Well, God, these are oh, they're all full of oil. Yeah, there's that e clip. Get that out. And then that's not going to come out because we have to remove that uh, lever for the music box, which is held on with a screw. And it comes off. And then that lever will come out like so, as will the other one. Oh no. That's got an E-clip there. Okay, so we're going to take that E-clip off. Okay. That E-clip is off. And then that should pull out, but it's not going to because this is a little different arrangement. This has got a spring wound around the wound around the arbor and I'm not quite sure that's a very kind of bizarre it doesn't really have a function that way what it does is it uh, keeps tension on the thing so we gotta we gotta remove that e clip to get that out of there and get that spring out of there. So we will uh, uh, there's some more. <laughs> some more lacquer. That's a little different arrangement on that. I haven't seen that arrangement before. So I have to kind of remember how that went. That is if I can get the E-clip to come loose. You know what? I think I'm just going to leave that in there. Uh, until I get the plates apart. Okay, the other thing I can do with this, just to get things out of the way and make the assembly easier, is to take, let me get a piece of cotton, put on the jaws of this uh, pliers. I don't want to rip up that post, but that post screws in. Man, that is really tight. Oh, it is not screwed in there. They've, uh, they've riveted it in. Well, that figures. And I don't like the fact, no, oh, why'd they do that? Normally the, uh, Saving money, that's why. Normally they have a set screw in the uh, 
in this wheel too, but they don't. They've pressed it on. <sighs> Maybe understand why the guy did a dip and a dunk and switch or swish instead. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that off of there. I have to wait and see if I can get it off after I get the plates apart. Same with the uh, with gathering pellet up. Yeah, this is much more cheaply made than they used to make them. Put a piece of cotton over that. Good if I had a piece of cloth right here, I'd do it with cloth. Let's see if I can get that gathering pellet off. Sucker you. Get my light out of the way here. Oh, come on. Come on, something cooperate right now. I had to do a tug and a pull with that uh, gathering pallet. And I, did, I know sometimes when I'm doing that. <laughs> My arms go flying, something goes flying, and I end up knocking the camera a distance, and I don't want to do that, so I shut the camera off and moved it. Okay, the other thing to notice when you're taking this apart is that the, there's a little tab on the, the door lever, and that's got to go behind that pin right here. Make sure when you put it back together, that's behind that pin. And these are all riveted in anymore, so you can't even take the bird perch off. These are pressed on. It's almost impossible to get that off. You got some more plastic wheels in here that they used to not have. Uh, is to take these uh, four nuts off of the pillars. Man, there's still uh, lacquer pieces falling all over the place here. Go ahead and put these nuts all in here. More lacquer coming out. A piece of lacquer just flew off of there when I am doing the nut. Okay. Now, things are going to fly because a couple of these pieces can't be taken really apart. Okay, there they go. Everything just fell out. So There's that. Let's take a look at the, at the pallets. Them with a fingernail. Just a little shiny spot for where I don't really see anything on them. Just oil as usual. Alright. What we gotta do is Okay, the two chain wheels. Are the same. One of them run, one of them strike. Okay. This is strike. This is run. That's strike, that's strike. That's oily. Yeah, these are, oh man, there's a lot of oil on this. <clears throat> I'd really like to take that out so I can clean 
that. Okay. Okay, I got a crow's foot here. One more. More lacquer pieces coming. Anyway, crow's foot. Uh, this is angled. And I'm going to put it in behind that wheel. And I'm going to tap it. Before I put that back on, I'm going to drill and tap a hole in the side of that and put a screw in it for the next poor guy that's got to do this. That's insane. Um, they should have manufactured, but it's, it's cheaper. You don't have to drill a hole. You don't have to tap it. You don't have to have a screw put in it. So you save a part and you save two at least two operations by not drilling and tapping and a thing and putting a screw in it. So they just press it on and say the heck with it figuring yeah nobody's gonna bother to repair these. They're gonna just replace the movement anyway. That's the nature of the beast today. And why a lot of people don't bother mess and trying to repair these. They just replace them. But, and then these end up as either junk or in a landfill. So I'll get that apart. Now one other piece we can take out is we can take out this lever. That's the lever that holds the door open. And that's also held on by an E-clip. And so we'll Oh boy, that puppy flew. Oh, that's why I keep a whole extra set of e clips around so that I can just replace them. Anyway, that lever comes out. And uh, stick that in there. Again, the. Uh, Alright, this is that one. We can take this lever off. It's got a an e-clip on it holding a spring and center wheel this little brass piece is pressed on there tight with a spring and that makes this wheel act like a clutch so that you can turn the hands and the wheel gears will slip behind them you can take that off Try getting it back on. Unless you see that that is really worn, technically you should take it off to get in and clean that pivot, just like a pivot hole, just the same as any other. But I don't take them off unless I absolutely have to. So uh, better to leave that in place. Um, look at this. A piece of lacquer. Another piece of lacquer. More lacquer. 
more lacquer. I wonder that didn't interfere with it functioning, having all that loose, loose garbage floating around in there. You know, it's pretty dirty and oily. So well, next uh, step is to uh, just get this all cleaned up. So we'll do with the ultrasonic cleaner. <coughs> okay, forgot to uh, press the record button, but I cleaned this up. And I drilled a hole in the side and tapped it. I put a screw in there. And uh, it should go back on that wheel, I think, now. Yeah, yeah. Let me clean this off. <coughs> so just reamed out the hole a little bit so it wasn't press fit anymore it slides on it slides on that arbor now so we can when we put this back together it'll be a lot easier this won't be driven on and then when, once once you have a set screw it makes adjusting the uh, strike a heck of a lot easier too so that's done okay here are all the parts of the movement cleaned pretty well. Some of the stains that are in the middle are so bad I can't get them out. Uh, probably a really harsh chemical that was used on them at one time to clean this. It uh, pitted the surface of the, of the brass so I can't get it absolutely spotless. But it's going to be functional. So there are all the parts that go into this little clock. What we're going to do now is uh, start putting uh, each side uh, gears back in and making sure that there's not any bad wear in it. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to check out the run side. In this case, uh, you've been following the uh, 30-hour repair things. You'd find that uh, this has a little extra gear in it that uh, goes between the second wheel. Normally, the second wheel drives. Uh, the uh, motion works directly. You have to have a little gear in between that will drive the uh, yeah, that'll drive that so gears it down. Okay. Here's our third wheel. Here's the uh, that's actually part of the motion works. Alright, so now we got all the gears in the position they have to be in. Now we'll put the plate back on. And uh, so get it started we'll put some nuts on here to get it. Alright, and then what we gotta do is we start slipping gears. Alright, take these glasses off. You got those two in.
put the nuts on. should run. It's been running for several weeks. Let me zoom in here a little bit. You can see this a little better. Okay, and here, this is the run side then. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at uh, Actually, it runs quite well, probably doesn't need any work. And uh, we're going to take a good close look at it. Let me uh, bring this down here where you can see a little better. Okay. Right, we're looking at uh, here's the main wheel, here's the second wheel, third wheel, uh, fourth wheel's kind of behind. Anyway, looking at the second wheel, there's just a little tiny bit of movement in it. Most people wouldn't bother to replace this, but uh, it's worn a little. Other gears in the train. There's the next one. Not much movement at all. Nothing there. Uh, because this is uh, an eight day, if this were a one day clock, I'd probably not bother with replacing that right now. It'll probably run for quite a few years before it needs to be replaced. But, because I'm not going to be around to work on it again, God knows if the owner would be able to find somebody who could. I want this to work a long time. So I'm going to probably go ahead and replace. Yeah, same with the back. That's not really all that badly worn but I think I'll replace it as well that's the second wheel that's the one that's most likely to wear so I'm going to do a replacement on that uh, the other ones don't look to be in need of any replacement there they're about what you'd expect to find in a cuckoo clock so we're going to just replace the second wheels on the, on that and I know when this is running that this is going to run this way see uh, the direction of the, the hands would run so when I press on that that way I can see that the where then that, that main wheel pushes that second wheel yeah I gotta hold this still pushes that this is the second wheel pushes the second wheel to the left so the worn side of the hole is this side over here. The unworn side is here. So I'll need to do just a tiny bit of filing on this unworn side so that I get uh, that hole centered when I rebush that. If I look at the other side, same thing.
second wheel right here. I press on it. You see in this case. The worn side is this side. So I'm going to want to file on this side. Okay, I got the strike side put in. And again, we look at the second wheel. Uh, uh, I'm going to rebush that hole. There's too much movement in that one. I go up to the next one. Interestingly, you can see uh, that this has been rebushed at some time in the past. Uh, see, whoever did the bushing on this did a really good job. And you can see the out outline of the bushing on the outside here. It's got just a tiny, tiny bit of play in it, but I don't think that's significant. That may be what should be there. This second wheel, definitely, I, I want to rebush that. And if we're looking at it, pushing on it, you can see by pushing on it on the main wheel. See which side is the worn side. That side is the worn side. The unworn side is to the left. I'll just make a mark where I need to be filing to even out the wear. The others uh, seem okay. Go to the other side. And let's take a look at the second wheel there. At this focus. There's no significant wear there. That's normal play. But the next wheel up. That's flopping around pretty good. I think I should replace that one too. All right, these, both of these wheels that I'm going to be making new bushings for have pivots that are approximately 1.2 millimeters in diameter. <clears throat> so I need a bushing that has a bore of 1.2 or smaller. Well, I have bushings that are 1, I have one bushings that are 1.25, I have bushings that are 1.5. So I'm going to choose the bushings that I have a bore of 1, and then I will broach out the hole after the bushing is installed to fit those that exact pivot. Alright, so this is uh, the bushings I'm going to be installing. The diameter, the outside diameter of these bushings is three millimeters. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill out that hole to three millimeters so that I can put in that bushing and then I will broach out the hole to 1.2 millimeters but before I do that I've got to 
file a little bit off of that hole to that's uh, on the side that's unworn so that when I use the reamer to cut that hole that it will find the center. So I'm going to take a look at this under my magnifier and I think you can probably see where it's worn just a tiny bit on this side here. So I need to file out that side just a little tiny bit. with my file and that will be about all I need to do. I need to look at the other hole that I'm going to be working with. That's this one. The unworn side is over here. So I'm going to take my file. I'm going to put it in and just file out side just enough to equal what is worn on the other side and now we'll go from there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a use a reamer to breathe all those holes the reamer I'm going to use is uh, two millimeters in diameter. And it doesn't matter. You know, a lot of people say, well, you should ream these out from the inside. It really doesn't matter because the reamers are parallel on the sides when you're done. So you can uh, go from really from either side. So anyway, I'm going to drill that hole out. And I'm going to drill the other one as well. Okay, and now I'm going to go back and use a reamer. That's three millimeters in diameter. And I will now find that hole again. And that's cut out to three millimeters. And we'll do the same with this one. a burr. I'm going to use this tool to take the burr off and just ever so slightly chamfer that hole which makes putting the bushing in a lot easier. And I'll do the same to the other one that I just cut. And that's right here. Then to put that in, I'm going to take a block uh, This is a little messy because I can't remove this. I wish I could. Actually, I can drive it in from the outside if I just chamfer that just tiny bit. Stay away from these posts because the hole is parallel. And I'll just make sure that the bushing is put in that way. I'll 
side here okay and we'll do the same with the other one <clears throat> all right I've got the two bushings in place and now what I need to do is I need to fit this pivot to that hole right now it won't go in because it's too the hole is too small. So I take a five-sided brooch and I put it in that hole and I start cutting. I stop. See how close we are. And don't go in yet. Two tenths of a millimeter is quite a bit to cut out. I'm turn the screen around so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Go back in. And we're going to broach some more. See if it fits. I got some more to broach. I may have to go to a bigger broach. Should check that one a little closer. I thought it was the right size. Take a <coughs> it's called a smooth brooch, and I now smooth out that hole.
Okay. And now we have to do the same thing on the back plate with the third wheel. And that has to go into that hole. And it needs to be broached out. So I go back to the cutting brooch. Cutting brooch in there. And we cut away. And we see if we're getting close. to have the right wheel. Good thing they're the same size. Make a little more. Not quite. It's almost there. Starting to fit just the ever the smallest amount now. Okay, that should do it. There we go. It's just a little on the a little tiny bit tight. Goes in but it's just a little bit tight.
see those wheels turn freely. I think you see they do. The other check we have to make is to make sure that they move back and forth slightly. Let's go ahead and shake. And we have now successfully rebushed this and this. And now I'll take a file and level those out. The bushings that are just about a, a tenth of a millimeter wide or thicker than the uh, thickness of the plates. But that will do it. And let me check to make sure we don't have any flopping. Yeah, it's looking good. Okay, so after rebushing, I don't know if you can see that any better or not. It's the tiniest bit of play, and that should be the way it is. Okay. All right, and the time side, run side, we're only going to be rebushing the second wheel and that's both front and back. And that again, uh, I measured the pivots and the pivot on both of these sides is about 1.2 millimeters. So we'll do exactly the same here as we did with the strike side. We're going to use these bushings and we're going to do the same thing on that side. So we'll get, uh, we're simply going to file the unworn side, which I've marked, and then we're going to drill out, put in a new bushing, and then broach it out until it fits.
on the step. Right now it's on 11 o'clock and I uh, want to make sure that that's where that is. Okay. Okay, now I need to put a
Okay. That's all back together. I'm going to put the uh, washer on that one. This little washer goes back on the intermediate wheel. And the last little E-clip goes in there. Well, maybe it does if I can pick it up. in the stop position. Once I have it in the stop position, now what I have to do is put the gathering pallet on. The gathering pallet has to be put on so that that little tab, or that little stick, is in the is in the slot on the uh, gathering pallet, like so, and then I'm going to press that on there, and I have a little hollow piece of brass that I can put on top of that. over that pin just give a light tap make sure that it's tight and we should be okay and then we can test it to see if that functions we'll do that as Pull this off of the right. and then we'll run it. One, two, three, four, five, and it stops. Everything's fine. Okay, so that functions. Now we got to put on the. driven on. This one goes on with the little this little pin right here small pin has to line up with this slot so we stick this in here it lines up and rotate it around of course that's in the way now let me get that let me loosen this back up that one in, take the smaller one, same thing, line the little pin up at the slot, rotate it around, 
the nut one's out. The last thing that has to go in then is the hammer. And there is a, as I gotta see, how this is gonna go. Alright, anyway, same thing. It's got a little pin in it. It has to go in here. Oh, I got the, can't get that spring caught. And it rotates around, and that's installed. And the spring and the hammer, one end hooks here, the other end hooks in there. Hammer works good. That's all back together. And that little piece now that's got to go on there that trips the music box has got to go on and uh, it had a big blob of solder on it so I kind of cleaned that up a little bit best I could uh, actually redoing the whole thing that's going to go on here like so so I guess I gotta man my nose is itching Push that on, and uh, we'll have to adjust that after we get this all back together. So that uh, is all back together except for the pendulum hanger. And that's this little puppy, and we'll clean that up. Put it back on. Okay, got all the rust off of that thing. That's pretty nasty. There's the movement. All cleaned, rebushed. I put uh, four bushings on it, I think, didn't I? Uh, yeah, four bushings. And now what we'll do is we'll put that in way over here, and we'll keep it dust free until uh, it's time to put it back and the clock but the next step now get the music box out okay here's the music box you gotta take it out it's held with uh, at least uh, three maybe three four screws uh, yeah we got some from the outside here we can take it off from the outside and hold the whole square and then we've got, okay, we've got some aligning marks here to make sure it's lined up right. Down here we've got a little uh, plastic rubber wheel that has a shaft on it that runs to the outside and runs that water wheel. So if I'm going to get that all out of there to connect that, I'm going to have to disconnect that uh, rubber wheel to get that whole thing out. And uh, so I'm thinking that the water wheel has to have some kind of way of attaching. And uh, we'll check that out, but we're going to get that out of there. Okay. The water wheel has a little set screw on it. We'll use that to get the water wheel off. We can't head take this out or two small slotted screws in it. Excuse me. To clean this, we're going to take it apart. It's got a little 
E clip in it. A little dirty. And then we're going to take a look at what we can do with this. Clean it up, make sure it's okay. Here's how the chain is on. Let the shaft to the right goes out the side of the clock. So the this is the front. This is the front. Chain goes over the top. Let me just take it off of there. Removes it from that. And we're gonna take that apart now. Okay. So I need a pliers. And we're going to remove C clip or E clip, I guess. Okay, so let's get another container. Thanks, Jim. Okay, we'll take take that clip, put it in there. It should allow us to get that. Huh. Okay. take it out. I can take the chain off though by separating the link. Pulling the chain out. Uh, it's on tight. Now I just have to work in there as best I can with some cotton some cleaner. See what I can do with that get the dirt out of there. Oh, I want this clean when I'm done. Oh, I'll just clean everything up as best we can that way. Alright, well, I can see that it's going to have a problem eventually because in here is the only bushing that's supporting all of this way out here. There's nothing else supporting this at all. And that bushing is definitely loose, so I want to make a new bushing for in there. This one on this end I can't really see very well. I'll check it out. And uh, we're going to take some things apart and do some bushing. Okay, this came off with two little set screws. No problem. Now there's a set, there's uh, actually just two screws holding that in. And that is, uh, those are both Phillips. So we're going to take that off. Once that's loose, that's going to slide right out like that. Now we want to check this out very carefully and see what we got here. Oh my, yeah, that's really bad. Uh, this really needs to be tightened up. It's got to have a new bushing in it. Yeah, that too. You can see. So I'm going to take this out and make bushings for these two. Okay, 
and measured both of these pivots 1.5 millimeters so all I need to do is drill those out and put a 1.5 millimeter bushing in it we should be good okay got a bushing on that side and we've got a bushing on that side and if we look closely there's no slop in it at all it does move side to side like a clock runs nice and smooth okay that piece is done Okay, all done. And it's not going to wear anymore. Some nice new bushings. And it should run real well now. Alright, put that piece back in. <coughs> so we can keep things lined up properly. And we'll take this part out. And we'll see about fixing it up. this time. Okay. What we're looking at here is pretty sloppy in that hole. So we're going to rebush that piece from uh, the roller. Okay. Got that uh, part all taken apart cleaned. Now I gotta do this piece. Alright, there are no screws or any way to take these apart without actually bending parts and I'm not about to do that. So I carefully scrubbed everything with brushes, small brushes, toothpicks, everything I could get into every tiny little nook and cranny every gear tooth, everything I could. And then I dropped this in a container of alcohol and swooshed the alcohol around it so that it would completely rinse it, get into every nook and cranny, bearing, bushing, cleaned everything out, and I re-oiled it, and uh, it seems to work just fine. on this. Runs just fine. Okay, it's a real booger to get that comb adjusted just right. Get everything, the adjustments are kind of a stinker to do. But, I should have this now. Okay, this will be pulled on by the cuckoo mechanism, trips it, and then this runs. Get 
Excellent. That's got it. Okay, that's ready to go back in the box. Looks a little cleaner now. Had uh, one, two, three bushings put in it. So it should last a long time. Okay, here we're cleaning up the little dollies. These are easy. It just goes on with a with a e clip, and then these little things just push on the, the little figurines just push on the top. So anyway, I didn't video taking it apart. When I took it apart, I'm cleaning it with the uh, acrylic cleaner, and uh, just gonna clean them all up, make sure there's nothing on them so they turn freely. All these pieces have been cleaned and polished. And This has all been clean and polished. Everything clean. Okay, and that is nice and clean and ready to go back. Alright, the music box on this movement starts with this lever right here that's on the movement. And it can move down. That uh, particular wire is attached to the arbor that contains the lever that rides on the uh, gathering pallet and also has this part that ends up underneath the rack and uh, so when we get to the hour, half hour this starts to get lifted this gets lifted, moved this way, to move off of the rack and let it drop. Right, that movement outward also lifts the, releases the uh, rider out of the gathering pallet. But that particular lever, when that is lifted, that lever is on this arbor that this wire is attached to. So when I move that lever, you can see that that wire moves downward. Okay, that downward motion pulls pulls 
pulls on this wire on the music box. That downward movement does two things. One, it moves this lever up, or this part of that lever, upward to move in front of the fan blade to keep it from going. Okay, at the other end of that lever there's another projection that when this is pulled downward also pushes on this brass lever which is an extension to the stop pin on the roller. So that downward motion of this lever pulls back moves part of the lever up in front of the fan and also trips this lever backward. That disengages the stop lever from the hole on the roller and also disengages let's see if I can get a pointer here disengages this little plastic tab that is the permanent stop. It stops the fan. So when this thing is at rest, let me run this thing around. Watch the plastic tab. Little plastic tubing. It's pulled down. When this falls into the hole, the roller then pulls that lever down, slides this plastic piece in front of the fan, and that's the permanent stop. Okay, music box is now at its stop position. And when the cuckoo movement pulls down on this wire, it lifts this lever in front of the fan blade so that when that rubber pipe or that little plastic tubing is released it goes into a what's equivalent to a warning situation when the cuckoo is done cuckooing this is released and the music box can play. So the adjustments are critical. Make sure that this, and this, everything here is in the right position to uh, allow that fan to run, which runs the music box, until the cuckooing is all done. And there we go, that's the cycle. So we're about ready to put this all back together. Okay, we finally got the parts back in. It's really a booger to get back together. And uh, when you pull on this, that releases. Wait, maybe I can put a weight on like Cuckoo pulls on this. That's warning. Let's go. moving back forth for the guys on the front. Okay, let's go around front. See what we got. We pull on this. Warning. Play. a roughness and a catching in this turntable one of these dancers turning uh, and when I looked at it the plastic had been worn 
on these uh, where this goes through. So this was wobbling up and down and uh, of course that's going to change the depth and uh, cause some snagging the gear that runs this. So I made some bushings out of brass instead of leaving it as a plastic, worn plastic. And they're pressed in tight. But then I also put uh, some Loctite around it. Should hold it. There's not a lot of pressure put on those things, but that sure resolved the flopping around of this thing as it was moving quite a bit. Anyway, put some brass brass bushings in there so that it'll wear longer and uh, not wear like that plastic does. Okay, this is the wheel the chain runs over to run that uh, that water wheel, and the chain goes down to a small rubber wheel and a metal bracket. Well, that bracket was bent up, and this rubber wheel was dragging on the bottom of the bracket. So, I just decided to make a heftier bracket that I could also be thick enough to act with, uh, like, new bushings. So that runs nice and smooth now. And what I did was I turned a couple of posts. I did some careful measuring where this should be so that this wheel will line up where it originally did. And uh, this will drop into uh, the corner. And it's squared up now so that it'll, it'll uh, automatically adjust itself to, the, to be in line and squared without having to mess with that other bracket that was in there. So I cut two metal plates, drilled a hole through the metal plates, exactly lined up, made two posts to hold it together, and uh, just stuck a piece of metal on the side here to, to uh, screw it down. A little pin here, a little hole, and that will go into that goes into a pin uh, to help line it up and uh, that'll be much more substantial and it'll keep the wheel from rubbing that's how that bracket will sit in there uh, lines up nicely with the hole out to the water wheel be much more solid goes into the corner and then I'll screw it down here and uh, that should work much better. Some of you might be interested in these. Uh, I had to drill and tap the ends of these rods to screw this together. You might be interested in how size of those that I use. It's a little set that I bought. Uh, it's a tap and die set and uh, the ones that I used here was uh, I gotta see which one they are here this one this little this little tap that's a 264 and uh, the reason I chose that is that happened to be the size of some screws that I had that I saved from uh, taking old computers apart. And uh, so I had a bunch of these little 264 screws and just drilled and tapped with this set. And uh, this set goes down to a I gotta remember what the size was. Oh, yeah, the smallest tap in this set is a 
double lot uh, 90 threads per inch. That's a pretty small tap or tap. And we have the, uh, of course, a set of dies that go with those too. Well, it's a nice set to have for small stuff. Okay. some hang-ups in that music box every now and then. I'm taking a look at this governor. This thing. Wobbles quite a bit. And if we look closely in the, those pivots. They're flopping around quite a bit. So what I did was, and I'm going to see what we can do with a new governor. So I bought a new governor to try out. And uh, I'm going to order these. You order them based upon the number of tines in the comb of the music box and the number of leaves on this pinion. And it's a good match. The problem I see is looking at the side. piece that's sticking up here, it interferes when I go to put it in. It's uh, sticking out that way, so I'm going to cut that off. Try to make it match this one better. And I think it uh, might last longer anyway because the old one is a plastic gear here, and this one is a metal gear, steel gear. So we'll see what we can do with it. Okay, had to modify it a little bit. I had to uh, drill a new hole and tap it on this side. It was a number two 64 thread per inch hole. And then uh, I had to elongate the other hole to make it fit. I made a slight adjustment to the comb. And so let's listen and see how it works. hanging up on. Good. And now, with the new governor in, I built here runs well. There's the water wheel turning. And the dancer's dancing. Yeah. 
Beautiful. Okay, time to get this ready to go back in the case. So we've got the uh, chain's going to go on this one. Okay, like so. Come on, baby. There we go. Where's the, where's the chain going? Put the movement back in. I'm just going to set that up there and get the chains lined up. And of course, this happens all the time. Chain decides to tie itself up in a knot. Originally on this one, I thought we were just going to have pretty much just to clean it and put it back together. And as it turns out, there were a lot of things that were worn, things that were ill-designed. Not particularly impressed with these modern cuckoo, newer cuckoo clocks, as the manufacturers went well out of their way to save money and do things cheap. So we have, uh, for example, the, the old clocks, the dancing platforms are made out of metal. Uh, this one's plastic. And of course the holes through which the arbor for the, that runs the dancing platform uh, runs through. The plastic wore terribly. So I put brass bushings in it and proved that little rubber tire down here that runs the water wheel with a chain. That was uh, ill-manufactured. Uh, the tire was actually rubbing, taking a lot of the energy away. But the clock needed to continue to run right. So we made a new platform for that. And then uh, music boxes in pretty god awful shape. And tried first to uh, make it work with the old governor, but and it worked somewhat, but it kept uh, intermittently stopping. So had to. Uh, Replace it. Okay, now I'm going to put four screws in here. We're going to hook things back up and uh, then we'll see about uh, Let's see what we got here. Yeah, 
the uh, they went out of their way to cheapen manufacturing. Wish they just kept the higher quality and charged more for the doggone things because uh, as far as I'm concerned, the new ones don't hold a candle to the old ones. particularly like Phillips screws going out of these things. A lot harder to deal with them. this little wire. And that's got a hook into this wire here. trouble getting that cuckoo to uh, or that uh, music box to run uh, on the half hour and the hour and I determined that there was a reason it was a blob of solder on this wire that was on this part that does the pulling of the lever for the music box and that is they had a big blob on here because this had been broken off and they tried to just solder the thing back on. Well, I don't know what went on with this thing, but I think this is much too short. Uh, and the reason uh, what happens then is if this is too short, then as this rotates to be pulled down, this end is not going to move her as far as it needs to to trip the music box, especially on the half hour, because the movement of the but the mechanism on the front of the clock is uh, is much less on the half hour because the the cam that that uh, initiates the half hour cuckoo is shorter than the hour, so this moves less. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a longer one of these, but because that was soldered in there, I just don't want to mess with this damn thing anymore. So what I did was. Uh, I took a piece of uh, of uh, brass rod and I drilled it out to the same diameter as in this old one. I drilled a hole on this side and I tapped it to take that screw that was in the old piece. And I'm gonna drill. I'm gonna find a piece of wire. Uh, look and see something that's got about the same stiffness to make a lever that's longer than this one that I can put in here. Then I'll put this back in the lathe and do a cutoff and we'll have a brand new copy of this that will now have a longer wire on it and it should function a lot better. So I'll proceed from there. What I'm going to do is find Look for wire, see what would be an appropriate wire to put in here. Okay, I have a piece of wire here. The old wire is a millimeter thick. This is 1.1 millimeters, but it's the right stiffness to make a good lever. That will allow me to make a longer lever. 
So we'll see how this works out. So what I need to do now is I need to get a drill, and then I need to drill a hole uh, opposite this tapped hole, just as it's done here. Uh, right here, so I can insert that wire in there and attach it. Now the way they've done it here is it's drilled all the way through and then it was pained. I guess that's a good idea because that prevents this from going on too far under the shaft in a kugel clock. So I'll put this into a vise and drill a hole that's this size and so it needs to be a little uh, about one point tell you what I'll put it in 1.1 millimeters and then I will broach it until that fits good and snugly uh, number 56 drill suits the bill pretty well this is 1.14 and this is 1.1 to five so we'll drill out the hole with this and then broach it okay that fits beautifully I'll pull it back out of here and I'll uh, I gotta cut this off on the uh, on the lathe okay got a hole all the way through I did the cut off and now I want to drive this thing in opposite Threaded hole. I'm just going to tap it in. Okay, that's tight. And now I'll be able to now create a much bigger hook was on there before. There's the finished piece. Screw in the bottom. Loop. There's the new piece in place. It's just a tad longer and uh, it makes the uh, makes everything work right.